Before beans get roasted, they're referred to as cacao. And after you roast them, then they're referred to as cocoa. So these are our cacao beans. We're about to transform them into cocoa beans. Can you create the ultimate chocolate bar? And if so, how are you going to do that? And what variables go into making a chocolate bar? So in chemical engineering, we look at taking in raw materials and making products and using a set of steps that we call unit operations. And all the steps in the cocoa process are pretty classic chemical engineering unit operations. And I just thought this would be really easy and really great to add to our curriculum It'll help our students see a really good system. And I thought it was something that students would get pretty excited about. The Chocolate Lab is a place for uh, making chocolate and for introducing students to the various processes in the chemical engineering program. So Lyndon is the one who kind of introduced me to chocolate. His family is from Trinidad and they have uh, cocoa trees there. And Lyndon's a sharer, so he would bring in, he'd give me like a five pound bag of cocoa beans. And I'm like, what do I do with a five pound bag of cocoa beans? And so we made tea and we talked about it and we ate them. And then I started looking into how do you make chocolate? And as I looked at it, I realized this is a beautiful chemical engineering operation. I had been, used chocolate all my life as a tea, but never once had made eating chocolate, so I was just as new to this process as Professor Sternberg was. Yeah, <laughs> I like watching it. I know, I do too. <laughs> it helps me to look at all of my classes and see how they all relate to one thing, um, which is really nice because instead of each of our classes being about some specific process from a different industry, um, they all correlate back to one thing, which makes it easier for me to understand why I'm taking all the classes and how they all relate to each other. Um, so it's just made me more aware of the importance of each of the classes that I'm taking. I always try to figure out a way where we can help students make those leaps, make those connections between the information they get in this class and that class, where they're coming in a different perspective, but it's the same basic idea. And I really thought chocolate would be great to do that. It builds this structure that we can weave through the entire curriculum. All of our beans are fair trade and organic. Many companies will buy their beans from places that um, have child labor or they don't pay the people that work on their plantation. So they take advantage of cheap labor. Uh, we don't do that. We get our beans from a supplier who only gets fair trade or organic beans um, from various places around the world. And you're not just buying the commodity, we're actually looking at where, do we, where does the commodity come from? And as an engineer, I might get to choose, do I want to buy the cheapest stuff or do I want to buy something that I know that the workers have been treated well? In engineering curriculum, we often struggle with coming up with examples of how to teach ethics and how to teach, va how to teach values and morals. And this lab gives us a really wonderful opportunity to start that discussion with our students so we can think about the whole supply chain for feeding an, an industrial process. But now that we've found a way to bridge a gap and to teach almost the same ideas and then reduce our carbon footprint, uh, we've created a very common playing field here that's very safe, uh, non-hazardous, and we hope that it's, it stays uh, as pure or as organic as we would like it to where we we don't want to start introducing what does this chemical do in our chocolate now and can we eat it after this we want to explore how pure and how raw can we experience this raw material chocolate <laughs>